In this Writing 227 assignment, you're tasked with exploring the role writing and communication play in a profession you're interested in. That's a broad topic, and if you just search for the profession in writing or communication, you'll likely get too many results and it'll be overwhelming. In this video, we'll talk about how to refine a broad topic into something researchable. You refine broad topics all the time in daily life though you likely don't think about it that way. For example, let's say you start thinking about what you're going to cook for dinner tonight. You start with the idea of dinner, and then you mentally sort through a set of filters. What you have in the pantry or fridge at home, how much time you have to prepare and eat it, who will be eating it, nutrition concerns, etc. By the time you apply all those filters, you've gone from the broad topic of dinner to the specific idea of chicken tacos. The point is that you have the skill and just need to learn to apply it in a different context. So let's go back to your Writing 227 assignment and talk about how to refine your search as you learn more about the topic. I'm going to use nursing in this example. Like you did in previous weeks of this class, I've started with some exploration of this topic on the web to start to learn some of the common themes and ideas around this topic. One thing I found in this process is a textbook on writing in the professions that lists out reasons nurses write and how often they do that type of writing. What jumps out at me are the things that nurses do daily. I see that patient documentation and patient care plans are listed as the most dominant types of writing with what the author describes as major daily impact. Since those are important on a day-to-day -day basis, they will almost certainly be covered in the academic scholarly literature. I can now search on this type of communication specifically and find more common terms and themes that will help me build my search in the library system later. This in no way makes me an expert, but in just a few minutes, I found something that captures my interest and that I want to know more about. Hopefully in your web exploration of your topic, you'll have found some similar ideas that capture your attention. Now I'm ready to go to the library search tools and look for an academic source. I have two ideas I'm interested in, the principles of documentation and the use of documentation as clinical communication. These are ideas I got from my web exploration. They're still fairly broad, but I've come a long way from writing or communication and nursing. And as a side note, be sure to choose something that interests you. This sounds really obvious, but I can't tell you the number of times I've seen students struggle with researching a topic that they're not interested in because they think it's the easy one or the right one. Your research will be much easier if you're truly interested in learning about what it is you're researching. And it's common in the early stages of research to have a couple ideas. As you further refine your search, you can choose the one you want to focus on more, and it's good to have two in case one falls through and we'll talk a little bit more about this later. I'm going to start with researching the principles of documentation. In this search, I see several results that speak to the quality of documentation. As I review them, I see one purpose of developing good documentation practices has to do with legal liability concerns. This is interesting to me because initially I assumed that documentation would be all about patient outcomes. So now I'm curious about how the need to protect themselves or their employers against potential legal action shapes nurses' training and practice around documentation. That is a fairly narrow, researchable question. And I could change my search accordingly. All I'm going to do is replace the keyword principles with the keyword legal in my search. Now I have a lot of articles that hone in on the legal issues of documentation in the nursing field specifically, and I'd be able to dig into some of those inquiry questions for your assignment with this particular angle. So notice that also here, even though I came up with a narrower question, I didn't need to change much about my search terms, and I definitely didn't need to type my entire question into the search box. Now in real life, if that was my topic and I'd found a resource that worked, I'd be done. But since I had two ideas to start with, let's do another example. Documentation is clinical communication. As I scroll through these results, 
I see that they're not super promising. I can see from where my um, search terms are showing up with the bolded words that clinical and communication are being picked up as separate words and they don't really occur very often together. That may mean that that's not really a very common phrase in the field. I'm going to need to refine the search in some way. So I'm just going to remove the word clinical and see what happens when I just have communication. So I get a lot more results. And then as I scroll through and look at what I'm finding, I see that I have a little bit more complicated situation here. I've got the issue of communication with patients, communication among nurses, communication between nurses and physicians, the issue of using technology to do documentation and how that might impact communication. So each of those topics could likely, likely be the subject of an entire paper on its own. When I first thought of this topic or came across it, I was thinking along the lines of nurse-physician communication and how nurses' documentation practices inform physicians' practices. And I do have at least one result here that's along those topic lines, so I know that's a promising route to follow. So I'm going to modify my search terms again, adding the term physician. And when a term has a synonym, like doctor for physician, you can put both those terms in parentheses and separate them with the word or to tell the system to look for both. Okay, now I'm getting somewhere with this topic with several results on nurse-physician communication via documentation. And this topic would also be suitable for exploring one or two of the inquiry questions in the assignment. You can see that it took a few attempts to refine my search to something workable, and I could have chosen to go in a different direction altogether when I saw the options, if one of those options caught my attention. When your initial search doesn't produce the results you think it will, don't give up, but think about what's there and if that's interesting to you. If there's even one result that seems relevant, like my nurse-physician communication example, think about the characteristics of that article and how to get more like it. I will say some ideas, no matter how much you refine them, will not produce enough results to be viable. This often happens when your topic is too narrow to be covered in the scholarly literature. Let's say you were interested in how nurses communicate with the general public about their labor negotiations with management at St. Charles and Ben. This is something you'd find covered in local news or be able to interview people about but you'd have to broaden your topic away from the specific regional focus to find coverage in an academic database. Another scenario in which it's common to not find enough research on a topic is when something is too new or too individualistic to be widely studied or widely studied yet. This can happen with emerging technologies, recently enacted laws, recent events, or very new or currently unusual ideas. Whether you find too many results are not enough or are just struggling with developing your topic generally, remember that you can ask a librarian for help. You can reach out to me directly, you can stop by the library, or you can contact us by phone, email, or chat.